Major news tonight, an NBA owners committee met this afternoon and moved to force Donald Sterling to sell his basketball team. The league released this statement. This afternoon, the advisory finance committee met via conference call to discuss the process for termination of Donald T. Sterling's ownership of the Los Angeles Clippers. The committee unanimously agreed to move forward as expeditiously as possible and will reconvene next week. There could be potential repercussions. Are the owners setting a dangerous precedent for themselves? And what if Sterling refuses to sell and file suit against the NBA? We're joined by Lanny Davis, former White House special counsel for President Bill Clinton and author of Crisis Tales. Rick Porro, a sports business analyst and former NBA player, Cedric Maxwell. Lanny, are you as surprised as I that there has still not been an apology from Sterling? Well, it's amazing to me, unless his goal in life is to um, lose credibility with friends, colleagues, and doesn't care about his personal reputation. And there are people who get a point in life who really don't care. Uh, it looks that that is the case. If he did care a long time ago, he would have uh, uh, apologized and put the team up for sale himself and indicated that he doesn't deserve to own the team, given uh, what he clearly uh, feels about uh, uh, African Americans, which is racism. Cedric, I think I saw out of the corner of my eye that as I was doing the intro and, and, and talking about the repercussions and perhaps setting a precedent here that could come back to, to haunt the owners, I think I saw you nod. Maybe I didn't. So let me just no, add. You okay. Speak to me on that issue if you would. Well, well, I think one of the things you really look at, you are setting a precedent when it comes in. I mean, you look at a couple of years ago, Kobe Bryant said something that was homophobic, uh, you know, about an official. What happens if somebody finds a tape of Kobe Bryant saying something like that again? Where do we go? I mean, this is a slippery slope. Mark Cuban said it best. I'm not sure where you go, who is the next guy up. There are going to be a lot of ramifications which come into play here if you think about what has happened. Rick, I took a look at the bylaws, the owner's bylaws that apply to a circumstance like this, and if I'm interpreting it correctly and going to the proper paragraph, it says, at such price and on such terms as the commissioner shall deem reasonable and appropriate, that would put a great deal of power in the hands of the NBA commissioner, because I've been wondering, how do you facilitate the sale? And I guess my question for you is, is it, is it to the disadvantage of Sterling the longer that this goes off the clock because the franchise will be devalued. Absolutely, and in any context, we don't hold a bake sale for, for, uh, for Donald Sterling. By the way, he <laughs> bought the San Diego Clippers for $13 million in 1981. Forbes values this franchise at 575 based on distressed sales, by the way, the LA Dodgers for $2.1 billion, and all of the Oprah Winfrey types that are lining up to buy this. Here's 20 bucks, by the way, Michael. I'm officially in the race. I want to buy that franchise as well. <laughs> well, everybody else is in. Is Why not you? <laughs> it, 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 it. Well, I, and I am in now. But the bottom line is the reduction of brand value continues. Sponsors flee. Players flee. Doc Rivers doesn't coach. The longer the thing gets tarnished. He may litigate, but it's to his own personal financial detriment and certainly to the owners as well. Hey, Lanny Davis, to Cedric Maxwell's point, I want to address something to you because I know in the past, uh, on that illustrious list of your clients was one Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Redskins, and I know you provided him with advice previously. Harry Reid, on the floor of the Senate, has now dragged or attempted to drag Daniel Snyder into this conversation. I think that's precisely what Cedric was talking about. Is that appropriate, Lanny Davis? Well, first of all, with all due respect to Senator Reid, he's just flat out factually wrong. There isn't a racist, bigoted bone in Dan Snyder's body, and nor has he ever indicated prejudice towards any group. The debate about whether the Washington Redskins is a racist name is a reasonable debate based upon people's point of view. There are many Native Americans that are proud to say hail to the Redskins and sing that song at the stadium, just as I have been. But it's an 81-year-old name, and to compare the debate on that name and respect for those who are offended by it to the man uh, that is a racist and overtly over the years has been a racist. Why it took so long for the NBA to catch up to a man who discriminated against people on the basis of race in the housing uh, marketplace. So there's no comparison. Senator Reid is really, I think, uh, unfairly and inaccurately making that analogy.
I want to bring in Arnie Filco, the CEO of the National Basketball Retired Players Association, who's been involved in discussions about the Sterling situation. What about this idea of precedent? Has Silver started one in your view? Well, I think the commissioner has taken great steps here. He's uh, shown great leadership. I thought the decisions and uh, the position that he announced on Tuesday was absolutely correct. Um, you know, he he was responding to a terrible situation uh, of bigotry and hatred, and I thought the league's actions so far have been outstanding. Uh, one step further today with the Advisory and Finance Committee, eventually this will make its way to the Board of Governors, but uh, you know, I'm really proud of how all of the basketball family has to come together uh, for the good, whether it be the, the players, the union, the league, the retired players. This is one family, and we've all been together on the right side. Rick, the, uh, the issue of where we go from here and the forced sale of the team, the lawyer in me recognizes that to the extent that franchise is diminished by this process, Sterling can turn around and, and try and try and lay that off on the NBA and say, you know, it was a $500 million franchise that now is worth a rock bottom of $200 million or whatever the data may say. And the lawyer in me says that he probably caused a lot of that himself. When the NBA looks back historically and when history judges this, maybe even four months from now, they may get a billion dollar asset sale. The Bucks just sold for 550. Why not a billion here? And every time the names are lined up to buy, the price goes up. The players, as we just heard, are un unanimously behind this. An unprecedented show of solidarity and a significant decision by a commissioner who's only been on board for two months, although been in the shadows of David Stern for a while. The international globalization of the NBA, 215 countries now looking like a league of diversity, not a league of racism. So I would say four months from now, history is kind to this process. And as long as Donald Sterling keeps his lawyers to the transaction side of this business, not the litigation side of this business. Cedric, do you think that the current players in the NBA are wise to the point that you're making, the Kobe Bryant point, the point that says, hey, this guy needed to go, but be careful, this could come back to bite some of us in the fanny? Absolutely. I think if you look at the players right now, I think they have an understanding, but do they really have an understanding? At the end of the day, everybody is on board right now for scrutiny. Players, owners, everybody. So now you're looking at how are you going to judge all this? If you're an official of a basketball game, are we start talking about language right now? You have enough right now judging the NBA game. Now you have officials looking at language which is said in football, basketball. So the slippery slope is there. How are you going to control this thing to me? I am not sure. But all the players right now have lined up. All the older players have lined up, and they are following what the new commissioner has laid out, and I love it. Arnie Filco, Cedric, as well as Lanny Davis and Rick Horro, thank you so much.